I'm going to read Marvel Spider-Man. On his way to school, Peter felt a strange tingling, but it was not an allergic reaction to his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It was his spidey sense. Peter wasn't just a high school student. He was also the famous superhero Spider-Man. After a quick costume change, Spider-Man chased the villain he detected in the sky. It was Vulture, Spider-Man said. Spider-Man, out of my way, Vulture yelled. Oh boy, I am going to be really late to school, told Peter. Hey, bird brain, shouldn't you have flown south for the winter? Spider-Man launched himself into the sky and battled Vulture. Cut you, Spider-Man called out as he trapped Vulture in his web. Now that's a good way to get ready for Miss Hall squeeze, he told. I can't miss first period, Peter mumbled to himself. That's the only class I have with Mary Jane. Then he swung off to school just as the police arrived. Hey, Tiger, Mary Jane said to Peter after class. Tiger was her special nickname for him, and it was made Peter blush and smile. Listen, there's a free play in Central Park during lunch. I know you wouldn't usually be interested, but this one's about a scientist who is scared of his own shadow, Mary Jane said. I'm not scared. Do I look scared? Peter said quickly. Mm, no, Mary Jane said, giggling, but you do love science. Peter could not believe it. Was Mary Jane really asking him out on a sort of maybe date? Yes, definitely, Peter shouted. Then, not wanting to sound too eager, he added, I mean, ahem. That sounds great. Good. Let's head over there together so we can grab a slice of pizza before the play, Mary Jane said. Then Peter felt his head tingling again. You go ahead, MJ, Peter said. I'll catch you at the park. Okay, but don't be late, Tiger, she said with a wink. What can it be now? Peter told, emerging as Spider-Man on the rooftop of a nearby skyscraper. From there, he could see the entire city, including the electrifying Super Villain Electro. He was breaking into a power plant, trying to change, trying to charge your phone. Huh, Spider-Man shouted. You can't stop me, Webhead. Electro snarled. As quick as lightning Spider-Man web Electro into a cocoon. As quick as lightning Spider-Man web Electro into a cocoon. I'm kind of late to this maybe date, Spider-Man said. Cool if it I just drop you off here. Sorry I'm late. I got caught up, Peter shouted. Don't worry, MJ replied, but hurry, the play is about to start. Peter felt relieved. He hadn't blown his one chance with her. They finally found their seats. Everyone was ready for a good show. I'm really excited, MJ said. I've wanted to see this play for forever. Peter started to smile, but he once again felt that familiar tingling. It's only the first act of the play, he told. Something's wrong, and I'm not sure it can wait until intermission. I'll be right back, he whispered to MJ before disappearing. He hoped she wasn't annoyed. A moment later, 
Peter came out as a Spider-Man. I think I've done as many costume changes as a lead actor. Spider-Man grumbled. He searched the park to see what had set off his spider sense. Soon he found the answer. Rhino. Look who escaped from the Central Park Zoo. Spider-Man joked. Rhino didn't look happy to see Spider-Man. He roared and charged at the hero. Yikes! There are too many bystanders to get out of the way in time. Spider-Man told. Swiftly, Spidey made his webbing into a giant slingshot. Ha! Huh. You don't think I can break your little webs? I'm huge. Rhino laughed as he picked up his speed. Your head is as thick as your skin, Spider-Man said, taunting him. Rhino stampeded right into Spider-Man's webbing. As soon as he made contact with the web, he was shot into the distance. and became a tiny speck in the sky. Peter ran back to the play after a quick change. Peter, you're sweating. What happened? MJ asked. It, it got really hot. I had to step out, Peter replied nervously. Well, you certainly miss a show. I know. I'm so sorry, MJ. Peter felt bad. That was not how he had wanted his date with MJ to go. She deserved better. No, I mean, Spider-Man was here. There was so much commotion. The play stopped. It turned out it was Spider-Man battling Rhino, MJ told Peter. Really? You saw that? Peter asked Jack. Totally, he was amazing, MJ gasped. Oh, he's not bad. Peter tried to play it cool. Not bad. Spidey's my hero. He can swing from rooftop to rooftop. He fights villains and always saves the day. He even has a bike that climbs walls. Peter suddenly felt good inside. Maybe he had actually impressed MJ. But then he remembered no one knew Peter Parker was a Spider-Man. Mary Jane so Peter looks sad. Don't worry, you're not so bad yourself. You just have really bad luck with timing, she said with a laugh. Tell me about it, Peter replied, shaking his head. And I'm going to share... Another book, just one more swim. Big Bear's tiny cubs were safe inside her snowdrift den. The cubs woke up. They yawned and stretched. Big Bear sniffed the air and wandered out toward the water. The cubs comforted after her. Big Bear stopped and dug a hole. She dipped her paw in and scooped out the fish. The cubs did just what Big Bear did. Big Bear coached her cubs a little farther toward the ocean. Big Bear and her cubs slowly and carefully made their way to the water's edge. Then Big Bear swam out strongly to an island of ice in the waves. Big Bear called to her cubs to swim over to the island. You can do it, called Big Bear. I know you can, and they did. Before they knew it, the cubs were swimming too. They splashed and somersaulted through the icy water. They paddled and swam until Big Bear insisted, come out now. Then Big Bear led her cubs to where the juicy blueberries grow. They ate until their paws turned blue. 
Big Bear enjoyed the sunshine on her damp fur. But the cubs have other ideas. But Big Bear smiled as the cubs headed back toward the water and they called, Just one more swim. Thanks for watching.